Hello, everybody. Sandra Adelaide here from Kiev, Ukraine. Sorry, 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 everyone, for the delay in today's program. <laughs> I almost called the program off because we had some technical challenges. Now, I also want to apologize to everybody for yesterday because yesterday it was not our fault. It was Facebook's fault. There was a major problem going on all over the world uh, uh, from the side of Facebook yesterday. So much that uh, we couldn't go on live. And we soon discovered that it was not just our program that couldn't go on live, but most programs couldn't go on live for most of the day yesterday on Facebook. So today, uh, we are back with you. And uh, we are back for all the way from Nigeria. Today, we are going to be talking about the mindset of a Nigerian husband or the mindset of Nigerian men in regards to marriage or their mentality in regards to marriage. Uh, I'm here today with a beautiful lady. You almost think that she's Miss World. I think she's Miss World in her own, in her own class. Uh, she looks stunning and it's, it's, uh, it's, it's very, it's a thing of pride for me to know that she's from my country. So let me introduce you <laughs> to the beautiful lady that's going to be talking about men today, uh, Anne Victoria Adeosian. How are you, Anne? Yeah, hello, yes, good evening. I'm fine. Yeah. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. I'm really blushing. <laughs> yes, because you are yeah, looking, you. You, 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 you're looking perfect today, perfect. If there's anything like perfection, that is you today. And yeah, then thank you, dear. with your with yeah, your hello, everyone. and who designed your your dress? I did. <laughs> you did. Wow. Okay. Now I understand that our European people, our people, our Africans in Europe, even Europeans, we have to we, we they will have to know where to go to now. All of them have to. Okay, I think we have your contact. We are going to put your contact. So you are the designer as well. Do we have do we have uh, yes, some of our designs, our pictures? Maybe you could go to our website. Maybe you see uh, our Facebook. Maybe you see some of our designs. Maybe people would like to. You, you we will get uh, patronage for your brand. We've got to make that brand because this top, this particular one you are wearing today, is just uh, perfect, perfect. So yeah, welcome, welcome back to the program. You've not been here. You you were here about is it two three months ago? Yeah, about four months ago. I was here in um, February. Oh, February. So it's been four months now. Welcome, yes. welcome back, welcome back. Thank you. Okay, Tom, tell me about this topic. Yeah. Okay. Um, this is about the Nigerian men, and I think I really have a lot of. Uh, passion I to, to, um, to talk about this topic because it's like a major challenge you know, in our society, in our country. And I believe that um, if the problem of men can be solved in Nigeria, we're going to be having less of issues. So it's a very dear topic to my soul. So I just really want to address um, some major things that we already know, including some of the ones that we don't know, because it's very, very important to me. Yeah? Yes, uh, you are right, and you are so right that uh, I just want to add to that that it's not just in the in the Nigeria. It's not just a problem that is peculiar to Nigeria alone. Problem of men is a universal problem, and actually, a lot of people don't know that if you could resolve the problem of men in any society, you could actually fix the problem of any society majority of the problem in any country will be will be fixed if we could resolve the problem of men now i want to tell you something when you are talking i think you shouldn't touch the microphone because it's making noise okay. yeah i don't know maybe your hand or, or maybe it's what maybe it's moving in your you know around your chest that thing you are wearing but just make sure that the microphone which is just in front of you there that is not shaking too much so that it's not making noise yeah, here we go. Okay, I'm pretty sure. So tell me about uh, your revelations and your understanding about this topic. Yeah, okay. My understanding about this topic is that um, I believe that from the, as in from the very foundation of our men, from the society, right from when, even when the baby is in the stomach, when a boy, when a male child is in the stomach, I think 
with uh, um, our parents have already started spoiling their child. Um, then, and men are being spoiled right from the stomach, right? Um, in the sense that even before they come out, you know, there is this template already for them to just follow. Because the parents, as in, even the parents have some, um, some issues, they have some societal whatever that is in their head about the male child. So even before the child is born, the child is already being programmed into what we have in the society, into the kind of men that we now breed as our leaders. So I think this problem is really something that's, it's a very big one. It's a very big one. So, so I think I will just leave it at that. So you, I, don't know, I don't know if you saw my, my series on mm -hmm. men on YouTube. I have a series on men where I was talking about a lot of, maybe I was talking about, it's a family series, of course. Family series, mm -hmm. but a lot of them were also on men. What is man? Who is man? Who is a man supposed to be? The role of man in the society, you know, the functions and the calling of a man, all those things. I think almost nobody has an idea about yes. who a, yes. ma a man is. People just look at a man and think he's a male rather than who a man is supposed to be really in the society and in the eyes of God. Yes, and that is because um, I actually, actually, like, God corrected my own mindset from watching your videos. It was from DSA, it was from DSA talking about women, and I started to understand that something is actually wrong with some women. I didn't know this before. <laughs> wow. You know, I was just like every other person. But I started having, being irritated, you know. I now go out, I get irritated when I see and witness certain things, because I don't know, I don't know if there's a kind of template in my head now on who a man should be. So I think it's actually from your materials that um, I, I can see that there's a problem with me because uh, um, a layman will not have this understanding. So it was from, I read some, um, um, almost half of the book, I've not finished reading it, A Man or a Mouse. And I saw that there's a lot of problem. We have bread, as we have a lot of mice in Nigeria, we have a lot of mice. You know, in place of men, you know, they just look like men and parade as men, but you know, there's a major challenge. And I'm sorry for the generalization, actually. I really don't mean to come across as uh, being unnecessarily rude or using derogatory word. But I don't mean to call anybody mice. But what I'm saying is that if the majority in the country, if the higher, if the higher percentage of the men we have in the country don't have the right understanding, it's a challenge. That's why I would say the typical Nigerian man. I won't say every man because, of course, there are exceptions. In every problem, we have exceptions. But my challenge is that the majority of men have the wrong understanding. Even, even women, the whole society as a whole, there's a problem with the Nigerian society. So I just. What, has, what are the wrong understanding? You say we have the wrong. The Nigerian men have the wrong understanding. What are the wrong understandings? Okay, yeah. Um, like, you know, um, the wrong understanding in the sense that. Um, they have unnecessary ego. They are not able to stand up as men when they are supposed to stand. You know, the only time you see a man standing up to see is when they want to lord over something or someone. But forgetting that every leader has um, something they are being they are giving to the society in order for them to become leaders. So we have a set of men who want to lead but do not have what it takes to, be, to lead. So they are trying to force that leadership on the woman without having what it takes. So you see a man that has not done anything that is worth being respected for, you know, just coming up and saying, you must respect me because I'm a man. You know, don't talk to me, I'm a man. So, but they don't really understand what being a man is. So I think that's why I want to do this. Have you, have you ever encountered that, that somebody will tell you, don't talk to me because I'm a man? Yeah. Yes, many times. It's, it's, it's normal. It's a normal thing. Um, I think some months ago, sometime last year, I, I was in a mall. I went to shop um, for some items. So after shopping, I got to the um, pay point. There was a queue, you know, and I was only like, I bought just one item, just a perfume or something. So I just, and then a man came um, carrying a very big basket, you know, a lot of um, provisions for the children or something, as in a very massive basket. And I was in front of him. So, but, you know, there's a, there's a problem. Even if um, I was actually behind him, I, 
I don't even have to be a man to know that. I, I am just, I cannot be sensitive enough to say, okay, since you have one item, can you, you know, just do your thing and go? Because I think I have a lot of items. But that's not the problem. This man actually came right in front of me, you know, and started to um, push to the cashier to say, you know, I came before her. I already dropped my basket. I only went to pick one more thing or something. You know, so at that point I was like, sorry, okay, sorry, I, I, whatever it is, but when I came to this line, you were not here. But um, can you just allow me the matter? Like, Are you okay? Do you talk to your husband like that? Do you know who I am? I was like, I don't. So that was it. There was a lot of insults just because I politely asked um, to to be allowed to jump. I was not even jumping the queue. But this man was insinuating that just because he's a man, as in, if he was a woman, there was no problem. But I was very, he was like, who are you? A very small girl, you're talking to me. I was like, that's not my business. It's not my business. You know, you being a man, wherever you are, I don't care. And I'm going to make this purchase. And that day, I was really ready for trouble. I'm not really like that, but that day, I was like, no, this man, you're not going to, I'm going to clear this thing. You know, at some point, I just put it that I'm going to pay for this person now, and I will do that. And even everybody there, they were not like, yes, or oh, that is true. Now, she wishes she's fully carrying one thing. You know, just let us, you know, and whatever. You know, at the end of it. So that's just it. So this is a man demanding respect from me. And he has not even done anything respectable. And because he, he was older than me, he wanted to bully me by his gender and bully me with his age just because he's a man. So we have a lot of men like that. A lot of men that don't want to take responsibility. They don't want to when something is going on. I have neighbors um, um, a lot of times because there's, there's a kind of connection here that um, we never is connected and everybody. So if the next class is not paying, we are all being affected. And we have men who will pay their never. And I will have to go to the WhatsApp and I'll be reminding them, please, you have to pay your never bill. You have to pay. And they still won't pay. You know, and this is, these men are actually leaders in their houses. They are leaders. And, you know, when I'm passing the next, someone will be expecting me to give him some form of regard. And it's very irritating. You know, you, you are a man, but you are not acting like you are. You are not taking responsibility. You are not taking charge. You are allowing a woman to do what you should do. I shouldn't be concerned about that part. But I'm the one to come and remind you, if the thing gets, I have to come to the WhatsApp to come and tell you to take your video away. So these are the kind of men. We have in this society. And these are the kind of people that our boys are emulating. They are making the, 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 the girls go crazy, women go crazy. Because you will not see women having to step up to take away the beat, having to step up to one and do for never um, fix the gender. You know, because of this thing, and they all raise the teeth. So it's a very it's a very big challenge in society. What do you, what do you see as the fault of the parents in this? Yes, I see it as a cause of the parents because growing up as a woman, growing up as a girl, you know, um, I think from right from when I was able to, you know, um, take data and information, I've been preparing to be a wife because, you know, when you're not sweeping properly, your mother, that's why women are naturally multitask, as a, a multitasker, because somebody is going to tell you that it's in the biology, but it's not in the biology. It's just the way we are being raised. You know, I'll be sweeping and my mom will tell me, you're not sweeping that in very right. So how you will sweep your husband's house. <laughs> you know, I, I, I didn't even know what husband was or anything. But from age 9 or age 10, I was already ready to be a wife. You know, when you, you have to cook very well for your husband, you have to, you just can't so say that you have to go to the husband's house. So everywhere has to be neat. Everything has to be put in place. So women are just taking up those roles. But nobody is, is training the men on those things. You know, after eating with uh, my brother or something, it is just very natural growing up that I didn't want to play with the dishes because I'm the girl. So the man is not being taught that you should you should take charge of something. You should you should get up and do something. So every household chores is not from the household chores. Every household chores goes to the woman. So if a woman is now being groomed to stand up and take responsibility to make sure everybody is tidy. You know, it becomes a part of us. It becomes a part of us because we are now naturally doing that. And the men are just people that just sit and just sit somewhere and just a woman is somewhere that will take care of the whole thing. I'm going to not marry because I'm tired of washing my clothes. I'm going to marry because I'm tired of cooking. 
Where is that woman? The woman should come and take over all these things. So that's the mentality of the Nigerian man. Getting married to them is like picking a woman who can actually stand up in bed as in it's just like their body should. Who should a woman who can take responsibility for what they should be doing? So that's why that's what the Nigerian man has in mind when going to be a wife. So we are you were speaking about the situation with the in with that man in the store. Uh, yeah. and don't you know who I am? Is that the way you speak to your husband? Uh, you have to listen to him because I'm a man. And you said that is the yes. normal thing in Nigerian society. Yes, yes. If that is the normal thing, where is that coming from? Do they teach them or do they just pick it up that because I'm a man, then women have to obey me? Or maybe I, I understand if they are saying, because the one I know about is that in Christianity, People say I'm the head of yeah. the family, so because I'm so the hus I'm the husband, I'm the head of the family. You have to listen to me. But what you are now saying is that a, a a strange man who is not your husband is coming to tell you that I'm a man. You must listen. Where is that coming from? Yes, yes, sir. Even a man who is not your husband demands respect from anybody. From anything called a woman, if they, they, as they demand respect from you just because they are as they are men, and yeah, they, they demand respect from you. It doesn't even have to be husband because this is not even husband to wife thing. This it goes beyond husband to wife thing. That's well, that one is another challenge. But just in this society, a man thinks that they deserve respect. I am a man, so you must respect me. There, there's a special kind of respect. And I'm very sure about that DSA because I'm going to tell you that I married last year and the way society treats me became very different. Like, I walk into the mall, if I should encounter the same man, all he has to do is look at my finger and he will give me a special kind of respect. Because they, he knows that the man is behind me. As in somewhere, even if the man is not standing by me, he knows that there's a man somewhere. I'm now joined to a man. You know, I'm not complete. I'm, I don't deserve your respect. So you can you can talk that at me. You can everything just changed for me because I got married. If I'm working, people are respecting me. You know, people are like, hey, Adam. You know, it's, it was not like that. What I was hearing before was little girl. What do you know? You know, things like that. Men were talking down at me, but not anymore. You know, you hear phrases like, "I'm going to respect you because you're a married woman. I'm going to give you that respect because you're a married woman." So this just has to do with something that it is just the men. Once you're a man, you are special. And once you bring a man, a woman into the picture, the woman has an invisible covering for when you are not there. And the men know all those things. So that's why they will always demand respect from you, irrespective of whether you are their wife or not. I, I think I've had a statement like that before, and I didn't know where that was that was coming from. There was a lady that somebody was ah okay <laughs> he's a nigerian guy who was speaking about mm -hmm. another lady on facebook and said if not because you are a married woman if not because you are a married woman i would have told you the way it is i would have called you your name yeah so i was thinking but maybe do you, maybe do you think that is fragmental maybe that is from cultural not for the whole of nigeria because I grew up in Nigeria till I was 19 years old. But I only grew up in the mm. West. In the West, where you are now, Yoruba land. Yeah. But I never had yes. such a statement before. That because you are a married man, because you are a married woman, that's why I will not abuse you. Or it's not, it's not cultural. Because the, the, the people I've had said this are mainly from the East. Is there any okay. connection in that? Because they, they, you, I've never had... A, a, a man in Yoruba land saying, because you are married, we respect you more. As a married woman, I will not tell you what I think about you or I respect you because of your husband. Because uh, Unless they know your husband and they really respect him. But not just because he's a man. Yeah. Uh, or I don't know. Maybe you didn't notice that or did you pay attention to that? What will you tell me? Yeah, yes. About that, I, 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 I actually was born and bred in Lagos. I've lived virtually all my life in, in Lagos. Lagos okay you know and yes and in the vicinity where I grew up you know yeah we have predominantly evil people and I'm not gonna lie about that 
But when it comes to that, I think the evil man has a very special kind of pride. You know, they have this, um, a very special kind of, you know, because there are people that want to make a lot of money. So, you know, that money is something that, okay, because I have a lot of money, you have to respect me. But not only for the Igbos. It goes even for the Yorubas. Even if they will not, um, like, say it the way the evil man will say it. Even the houses or even the, uh, the other cultures. Even if they want, the evil man is the one that will put their hand up and tell you that. Are you okay? How can you talk? But even um, when it comes um, to the other cultures, they have this thing. But it is just, they, they are not just as vocal about it. You know, there was a video that went viral, um, I think last month or so, of a woman, I think an Hausa woman, who is a marriage counselor. So she came on Instagram and she, she did a video um, and she was like, how many women can do this to their husbands? How I feed my husband? She's, I think she's from the um, house or not or something. And she was kneeling down. She brought the food. You know, she knelt down. The man was sitting, balancing. You know, and she was doing it like this. Is, this is, I'm giving. I'm giving. No, but that. still, that is at least to the husband. Yes. But that would not be to a strange man now. It will a strange man everywhere in Nigeria demand mm. that you have to respect him just because he is a man and you are... Or he could have talked yeah. down at <laughs> you just because you are not married. And if you are married, then he will not talk down at you because you have a man standing by you. That's everywhere in Nigeria. Well, well I've not really um, witnessed that per se, but it is just in the air. It is in the air for a woman to know that she don't talk to a man. It is in the air. And that's because, okay, let me even give this example. I was um, in the office one time, you know, and one of my colleagues was uh, narrating on, on something that happened. Like, um, you know, my husband came back very late, around 2 a.m. He was drunk. I was very angry. You know, when then he came, he was as if he was going to start pushing me. I just gave him a slap or something. You know, I was very shocked by that. You know, the woman, I, I mean, the woman gave, it? the woman gave the husband a slap. A slap, yes. They are from, I think she's from Delta. So everybody started, um, as if people were not even saying that, why did the man drink up? Or why did you slap him? You shouldn't have. You should have gone to somewhere to lock up yourself. Everybody was like, no matter what, you don't talk to a man. You don't know he's a man. Even if he's your brother, even if he's your younger brother, you have no right. To, to hit him. And I, I agree with that. But, you know, what they are trying to paint is that a man deserves a special kind of treatment and a special kind of respect. You know, growing up, everybody is always... What about a woman? When it, what, what? I thought here in this country where I live in, it is the opposite. Mm. It is the woman <laughs> you must never touch. In Europe in general, it is a woman you must never touch. Oh. You can fight a man, you can beat a man, but a woman... If you beat a woman, and you know, that is condemned by the society, is condemned by the authorities, is condemned by the, God, by the law, is condemned by, especially in the West. If you beat a woman, even if the woman beats you, you cannot beat her back in the West. Yeah, yes, yeah, it's not like that scale. As in, I'm very, this one, I'm going to say it anywhere. And I, I challenge every man in Nigeria to come and pay It's not like that. Over here, if a man hits you, everybody comes to tell you that you've been talking too much, that you, you, you abused him. It's your fault that a man hits you. So a man is the person that must never ever be touched because every man has a crown on their head. Every man is a king. So, so long as the person is a man, you shouldn't do anything, to, as you shouldn't hurt them, you shouldn't hit them, you shouldn't talk back at them because they are men. So every that's man has a... Nigeria, that's it. Every man has a crown on their yeah. head. Who told you that one? Well, Where did you hear yeah, that from? Like, no, as what I'm saying is like that's like the norm. Like every, there's like this invisible crown. Have you ever heard that before? Where did you hear that statement from? Well, I've not heard it before, actually. But what I'm trying to say is that they show this special respect and regard. No, they because everybody everybody has a crown on their head, both men and women. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the it's the man. The man's crown is more visible. The man's crown. There must be a king before them. You, you can only have a crown on your head after you marry, as a woman. 
You can only become a queen after you marry. The society cannot cannot give you a special kind of rest. No matter what you achieve. No, but the Bible says we are kings and priests. Nigerian society does not see it that way. And I'm going to prove it. I have um, um, evidences of pictures and videos that I sent. I'm going to I'm going to prove it. You know, I was very careful not Bravo. to um not to come over here and just talk because I don't want people to perceive and say she's a bitter feminist or she has a bias against me. So I was very careful to go and download a lot of pictures. What just what people comment and what people what, what people post on Facebook, WhatsApp, and even before this video, a week before this video, I did a um I asked a general question on WhatsApp on my WhatsApp status like um, what is wife material to you? Because I have a lot of Nigerian men on my on my list, so I was getting responses. So I'm I think this I see it. I see a picture here. Yes. This should, be, yeah, this, a, this should be a okay, Yoruba. Man. This should be a Yoruba family, right? <laughs> I don't even know. I saw it on the internet. I saw it on the internet. Because so the Yorubas, the Yorubas uh, are the people kneeling down and prostrating. Mm -hmm. But I don't think Yorubas still do this at this time to to, to this extent. To so I think the woman will bow, but not to this extent. Although I heard that in rivers also. A woman, a, a woman, maybe she doesn't, will she stand? I don't know. Do you think this is happening in Nigeria, anywhere in Nigeria at all? Maybe it's, it's maybe in some homes. It's happening. Yes, it's really happening. Like this? It's happening in the homes. Like this one yeah. I'm seeing now. Yes. That person, the person that made a video on Instagram was a marriage counselor. So she was counseling ladies like, I still do this to my husband. Do you? It really happens. Okay. Yeah. It happens, but maybe not as much. Maybe not the way it used to be. But you, you are, are right. I saw that one. There, there is one woman. Either she is a banker. Maybe she's a banker, MD of a bank or so, who was also saying something like that. That uh, even though I'm banker or MD, but my husband, I still need to my to give my husband food or something. Yeah, a Yoruba woman, Awoshika or something. Yeah, yeah, I know Awoshika. I think of Stanby. I visit Stanby Constant. Yeah, but Ibuku, and it's not Ibuku Awoshika. Yes, I think she is. I think she is, yeah. Yeah, and to be sincere, they say, this, um, a woman doing that to serve her husband food, you know, this is just a little of the problem that we have. You know, the woman has to yeah. kneel down to make the man to feel very big and as a king or something. This is a little problem. If these people were doing it in their houses and not trying to bring it out, if these men are not coming out and expecting other women to respect them like their wives, I think everybody should go to their home and function the way they want to function at the end of the day because these women are not exposed. Um, um, maybe it's a form of humility or something, but I don't know. There's something about this gesture that is demeaning. There is something definitely, about it that says I'm definitely, a slave. definitely demeaning. Do with me whatever you want to do. You know, there's something about this gesture that is very wrong. Yes. You know, but these men are also this. What this person is trying to do right now is to pump the ego of this man. And when he goes out, I have a slave at home. I have a woman at home that is worshiping me. So you, who are you that you shouldn't worship me? So this is this is what they see at home and what they want to bring out to the society and expect them Okay, to but let me ask you, what percentage of Nigerian men do you think still behave like this in their family families? Maybe in this um um kneeling down thing. Yes. I can't really I, I can't really say. I don't know. Is it fifty percent? Is it up to fifty percent? Up to fifty percent. Huh? It should be up to fifty percent. It's I don't think it's up to fifty percent. Or people have um, asking their husbands to kneel down, or, or their wives to kneel down and sleep them. I don't think it's up to fifty percent, but there are more form of um, authority and um, um, coercion into submission that is going on that doesn't have to be about this gesture. So it will be less because than fifty. Maybe, it will be less than fifty percent. Yes, yes. Of men asking their women to kneel down. Okay. And give them food. Yeah. Okay. That. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. On one of the questions, um, on my, one of the answers I got to the question I asked on WhatsApp, and I got about eighteen to twenty of them 
But um, I only picked two to use as a case study here. So okay. this is the question I asked. I said to the men, what is wife material to you? So I got a lot of answers, but I said, let me pick one from a man that is a bit sound, or, you know, the Nigerian sound man. Let me pick one and pick one from the one that is still very much later. And so this is the answer I got from the sound man. The man is saying, white material to me is a lady whose most priority is on the welfare of her family, husband and children. She must protect them in prayers. She must protect them. She must give them care. She must correct, encourage them, give them enough attention, and teach them and dialogue with them for the best. Now, DSA, to be sincere, two years ago, there was nothing wrong with this to me. What about our own, you know, what about our own, what about our own calling and fulfillment? 